Hi everyone! So today I'm going to be doing a small tutorial on a traditional European 4-in-1 and 6-in-1 chainmail. Basically, you have a couple of options where that's concerned. Either you can make and cut your own, um, and if you're interested in that, look up a different tutorial on that. I'm not going to be teaching you how to do that today. I honestly think that it's worth your money just to go and buy the rings. Um, good places to buy them are, sometimes eBay has really good deals on stuff depending, and then also the Ring Lord is a really good place. It has a lot bigger variety in color, in size, and it's got like scales, and it's got all sorts of these really cool things, and um, if you're looking just to make a shirt, I believe it has like packs that you can get for making shirts. You will also need pliers. I like working with smaller ones that actually have a spring in between them. I just think it's really nice because if they don't have a spring in between them then every time you close them you have to like stick a finger under and open them and close them and open them and close them and open them and eventually after like you know 5,000 rings your finger is dying. So I would suggest getting ones with a spring. They don't have to be huge unless you're working with um like a strong gauge of steel. So if you're planning on making these for battle, typically what people say is you can do 16 gauge if it's steel, and then go up to 14 gauge if it's aluminum. Um, I still have problems with the aluminum especially. So like if I actually get hit in battle and I'm wearing a 14 gauge aluminum in a one in four pattern, um, they fall out. Like, I, I, my husband has armor that has 14 gauge work into it, and I can't even begin to tell you how many times I have repaired that armor. <laughs> um, like, literally, after every battle, there's always something that needs to be fixed. So, if you're not interested in fixing your armor a lot, um, go for steel. It's still gonna do that but it'll be a little bit less of that. And if you're really, really, really not interested in fixing your armor at all, um, then go for scales. And I will do a tutorial on how to do scales. They are so easy. Don't even be intimidated by them. So in the end, you want your chainmail to end up looking something like this. So I'm gonna be using two different colors, and I only have like 20 of these or something, but I'm gonna be using some red, and then also, I'm going to be using some silver. So I'm going to take these four red ones and this one silver one and just put these four onto the silver one. Let's start from here. The rings are like that. I'm going to split them into two halves and then just push them up in the back. So it'll be like ah, that. And then I'm going to take this silver one and slide it around like this so that they're connected like this. This is extremely important that you connect them correctly or your, arm will, your armor gosh, will not flow properly. So once it's, this is on like that, I'm just going to put two more closed red ones on it and close the loop. Then I am going to repeat the process. So now we have like a thing like this. Um, you're going to want to hang on to these top two and then pull down on these bottom two and it's going to kind of flatten it out so that you have the same pattern and you want to make sure that these silver, like the top of the silver rings are like the top of the silver rings here and the bottom is behind and then the top of the silver rings on top of these red rings again just to make sure that the pattern is right and you also want to make sure that the red rings are lined up so like the bottom of the red ring is on top of the silver ring and the bottom of this red ring is on top of the silver ring. So this is extremely important and it's the hardest thing to keep when you actually start chainmail. So then you're just going to slide your open silver ring in. That. All good, all good. And take your two closed red rings and put them in there. Okay, so I've got a fairly sizable chunk now, it's really not that big, but we're going to work with it. Um, so in order to start doing a second layer, I'm going to take an open silver ring, 
and instead of putting it through the top two loops like I normally would to continue my chain, I'm going to put it through two side loops. Oh gosh, I hope you can see that. Two side loops. And you want to make sure once again that it's bottom lines up with that one's bottom. Then once you have it on, um, just slide two more red rings on and close your loop. Now we have this kind of a thing going on. So now we're going to put pull these red rings up and make sure that they line up with the red rings next to them. And I'm going to take another silver ring. Talking, talking. Um, and this time I'm going to bring it up through the two side red rings, including one which is connected to the bottom of the silver. And I'm also going to bring it through that third one, so I hope you can see the three I got. And then I'm going to add one closed red ring to it. Now it's like that. I'm going to take an open silver and just repeat up through those three. Okay, now we have our second row and I'm going to do the third row slightly differently. So uh, this actually doesn't matter, you can do it either way that you want. I just showed you one way to add rows on and this is just another way to add rows on. Um, it's usually what I do, honestly. But the, the first way that I showed you I think is a lot easier for beginners to learn. But it does require having open and closed rings, which can be really annoying. So this particular way just requires having open rings. So what I'm going to do is go through these two, they're like the top two red ones, and then I'm just going to close it. And then I'm going to take an, an open red ring and just put it inside. Close it and another red ring, put it inside and close it. Okay, then I'm going to take a silver ring, put it up through the three that you need to put it through. Hmm. This one's misbehaving, okay, like that, those three. And then close it taking a red one, putting it through the silver, and closing it, taking a silver one, putting it through three reds, and then closing it, etc, etc, etc. And then the more rows you want, the more you're going to add, the longer you want, the bigger the column you're going to make. Yeah, so that's it for my 4-in-1 tutorial. Now I'm just going to go through really quickly how to do 6-in-1. It is very, very similar, so I'm going to spend a lot less time on it. But let's get started with that. So I'm going to be doing 6-in-1 with these itty tiny, tiny, itty bitty golden rings. I think they're really pretty. So, yeah, I'm a girl. It's okay. We're going to start with one open ring. And instead of putting four onto the open ring, wait for it, wait for it, you're going to put six. Then I'm just going to flip them up like I did in the four and one. Take an open ring. And this is where it's slightly different. Instead of going through the top one over here and the top one over here, I'm going to go through the top two over here and then the top two over here like that. So there's four up here, one, two, three, four, and then two down here. And then I'm just going to add two closed rings. And if you're planning on doing a six-in-one weave, make sure that you go in online and look up good ratios for it. Um, because you can't just use the same, you typically, typically, can't just use the same chainmail that you use for a four-in-one weave as you can for a six-in-one weave because the six-in-one weave is a lot tighter than the four-in-one. Gosh, I'm talking. Okay, now we're going to just repeat. I'm going to take an open ring, put it through the top two on this side, and then the top two ah, on this side right there. 
and I'm just gonna repeat this. There is your six in one pattern. You can just see that that is a lot tighter than the four in one. Uh, there's also, if you have really fine rings like these ones, you can do an eight in one pattern as well. And I have a little chunk to show you because it takes forever and a half to make, but it is so, so beautiful. And literally it just, it just moves like fabric and I love it. I love it so much. Play with this thing all the time. Um, sorry, this is eight in one. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I made this like half a million years ago. This is the first thing I ever made. It's a six in one and oh my gosh, it took me so long. This thing literally took like 120 hours to make. And then my other favorite little chainmail thing that I made is I made a dress, which I know you're like, what girl, that is not armor. Yeah, it's not, it's aluminum. <laughs> it's like 16 gauge aluminum dress. But it's so cool and it's so pretty and I have pretty much always wanted a chainmail dress. And now I have one and it is beautiful and fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like this video. Bye.